the MDU. And if there's one thing I would like you to remember from, uh, from the speech is that we are going to be talking about the, uh, the, the time value of money. Or the, yeah, exactly. So um, just to kick off, a very brief um, thing on our company. Um, we basically sell worldwide fiber optic uh, passive solutions um, in any area of the, of the network. It could be come from the feeder until the, until the MDU. I won't go into that any further. Um, important thing, because you may read two different names, MTEL and Dantex. Both companies merged in 2007 just to, uh, to do an even better job in the, in the marketplace. Um, this is the area which I said we will be uh, we're active in, and I would like to, uh, to give you some background on what we have seen and what we're doing actually in the uh, MDU, which obviously, as you know, stands for multi-dwelling units. Quick scan through the... Uh, through the agenda. Um, just as an introduction, um, short note on what's happening in Europe. I've obviously collected some information on the Danish market, so I hope that is correct, but otherwise I'm sure you'll challenge me on that. Um, the investor's perspective, um, as I said, money is, is important in this thing, so which elements of money, and that I will link that back to, to time, because installation, how long does it take me to get a customer connected, and especially in the MDU environment, that's, uh, that is a challenge. The MDU picture, the challenges in the field, and we claimed that there may be a way to do it right in the MDU environment, so uh, hopefully uh, I can give you some, uh, some of our experiences on that. Picture in, uh, in Europe, I think there is a changing dynamic and a steady growth. Um, this is uh, done, uh, uh, research done, and some of you will probably know that by heavy reading in 2008 for the Fiber to the Home Council, the numbers you'll see uh, for 2007, 1.1 million, are roughly correct for Europe in terms of the number of homes connected. Um, if things go uh, as they go right now, I think we will, by the end of 2008, Europe will show about 1.9 million homes connected. So it's, the further we go in the process, I think the better at least the few is we, uh, we get on the, uh, the accuracy of the numbers. But there's a long way to go to 2012, as you can see. These are some numbers for Denmark, which most likely will look familiar with you. The 17,000, uh, 79,000 fiber to the home building subscribers is based on the information that was uh, provided um, over, um, over June this year, which is a 3.2% penetration. Deployment trends, most of the, um, the deployments are actually uh, initiated by utility companies, which is not, not a surprise for you. Uh, number of homes passed is about 6,500,000 at the moment. And I think the next challenge, because at the end of the day, and then we go back to the money, I think it is about uh, connecting homes and, and generating revenues. MDUs, um, it always helps me to get a, a bit of a big picture. I think worldwide about 670 million um, living units. Um, in Europe, roughly 50% of the people live in an apartment or a, um, an MDU. And you know the growing demand for bandwidth, and I think the, maybe to define that briefly, growing demand for bandwidth doesn't only mean that the extra time we spend on the internet or on any facilities that require bandwidth, but also the applications we're using or we will be using if, if the bandwidth is and becomes available. I like this one a lot because it can be quiet for two seconds. Um, Actually, anybody who invests, and I think whether that is in Denmark or in any other regions in Europe, will ask him or herself a few of those questions. Um, what is it going to cost me on day one? What, does it, what will it cost me to operate the network? How much money am I going to make? Because I saw a presentation earlier this morning, and there was a comparison between, you know, what is the monthly, the monthly revenues from an ADSL connection? Personally, I think that is a, a pretty tricky one, because at the end of the day, we want to use the new infrastructure to have much more um, services running on. And I think the business models, and if you say, well, are they there? In some areas they are, and in some they are not. Are these new business models or new services going to generate extra money for the people investing in the network? So I just to make this a bit simpler, because I had eight questions, reduce this to four. For an investor, it is about capital expense. What is my, what do I need to invest on day one? Operating expense. Market capitalization, it's a, it's a stupid word, but I will explain it. You know, if I'm an investor and I want to sell at any point in the future my network, what is it worth? 
i.e. how good is the network, uh, can I sell it easily on, can it be used by anybody else investing or you know, buying the network, and obviously the revenues. Our role as the industry, we believe, and with, um, with industry I think you know, all the people who are offering their products and solutions is to make sure that we provide products, I'm not going to talk about products further on, that, that help you in, in putting the, the solution in place in the, in the most easy way. Fiber to the MDU will eventually, or will eventually, will reduce your operating expenses because a fiber network, by definition, on the operation expenses side, is cheaper than, than a copper network. Um, as I said, capitalization, suppose I want to sell my network, it's important that it's reliable, which is obvious, and that it is scalable. So if I want to extend the network, I want to connect more customers, I need to take care of all those things. And obviously the revenue side, if all these things are taken on board well, I think we should be able to, as an operator, to market services and increase our revenues. There's another perspective on this as well, and that's where the time, the time factor comes in. The operator. Obviously, he is aware of his costs. The customer, he doesn't like it, you know, when the connection needs to be made and you need to go into the apartment five times to, to do the connection. So that needs to be done quick, safe, and, and good. The house owner, you know, obviously he also wants to minimize the amount of work that's being done on the, on the house in terms of people moving in, drilling holes, and so on and so forth. Um, and last but not least, the, the installer. He should be able to get in the apartment, connect the home, and go back. And that, with some of the projects, is, is a challenge, I think, uh, as, you, as some of you undoubtedly know. So, who are the investors? Um, utility companies, obviously, operators, um, people who have you know, if, uh, an outlook for the future and say, well, fiber is going to be the next thing. I think if you, some of you may have heard of the project in the Netherlands, which is from Rege Fiber. Um, so private investors, where are the investments being made in MDUs at the moment? We do a lot in Asia. Um, closer by in Europe, it is, it is Germany, it is the Netherlands. Um, we've seen projects in Sweden and in Slovakia, and there may, be, there may be or there are undoubtedly more projects, but those are areas where actually fiber is being either terminated in the basement or brought all the way into the apartment. <laughs> 